Let's get right into the hottest topic the last week, and that's credit markets. You know, you said something I've been saying all along in your most recent writing. You said credit not leading. That is huge. Credit has been actually super well behaved outside about the last week and a half. So I put it to you directly. Why are equities marching first in this parade really backwards to history? Because it really is an equity valuation story. Some equities may be overvalued. The other thing is I do think there is issues with some credits, but what's happening is you're seeing companies address those issues. So you're seeing dividend cuts, you're seeing talk about less stock buybacks, you're seeing companies do bond tender offers, so they're repaying bonds. That's what's happening here is companies are going to protect shareholder value in the long term by addressing any credit concerns. So credit's going to be more stable than equities this time around, which is very different, but also gives us real hope that this will, will find a bottom in equities and be able to rebound at some point, because this is not a systemic problem like we had in 2007 or 2008. No, and as much as I agree with that, the problem I see, Peter, is that we may be backing into the problem. In other words, the most recent angst yesterday, and Peter Bookfar spoke eloquently about it on our channel, is there's a raft of barely investment-grade securities that might invade the high-yield space. Your thoughts on that? One, there's been very little issuance in the high-yield space. There's still money in the high-yield space, so I think the ability to absorb that is very high. The other thing that's been a big shift both since 2008 and even 2016 is a lot of insurance companies in particular have the ability to retain double B paper if they want it. There's not that forced selling, so I don't think you see that cascading selling pressure. And then the last part is many of those companies are going to be able to repay debt coming due just out of free cash flow. So I think there's a longer lag between these concerns and anything getting downgraded in a material way. There may be one-off cases, but this is not going to be a big down trade in credit. Uh, another thing is some of the uh, ways that uh, entities insure or buy uh, different derivatives to try to pair some of the drops they have in non-investment grade in particular, those levels aren't nearly as high. The insurance isn't nearly as expensive as it was even in February. What conclusions do you draw from that? You know, again, I think a lot of companies really did benefit, particularly the smaller companies, from you know, the tax reform. And if you look, the Russell 2000 isn't getting dragged down as much. So to me, I always try and think of the high yield market a little bit like the Russell 2000. And the Russell 2000 has actually been doing okay relative to either the S&P and certainly then the NASDAQ. So that's supportive of these high yield companies. I think the free cash flow story is stronger than it's been in the past. And that's just why there's not as much interest in shorting. And people don't want to get burned because it's expensive to short these if you get it wrong.